Hello everyone, welcome to another video and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to write a web app using Python. For this we're going to use a framework called Flask, which is very simple and quite light to use. We're going to go through all the steps, from installing the framework all the way to having a functional web app working locally in your machine. So let's get started. Very quickly, before jumping into the specifics and the steps for the code, I want to mention that this is going to be part of a video series where we're going to take a look at Flask, just all the way from developing the web app to making it pretty using templates, de deploying it to your servers and all this stuff. All right, so the first thing that we need to know is what is Flask? And this is a very lightweight web development framework for Python. And what this means is that it's just like this collection of functions and routines and things that you can use in order to develop web applications very easily. And believe me, it's quite surprising how easy it is. Actually, we're just going to go through all the steps and at the end, you can tell me if you found it easy or not. So the first thing we want to do is just create a new folder where we're, I'm just going to say like Flask Web App. I'm gonna call it like that. And in there, I'm going to build a new file that's going to be called app.python. Hi. And this is the place where we're just going to write all the code. But before writing any code, we have to set up an environment. And this is uh, recommended because you don't want to pollute different things that you might need in one web app with something that you might need in another one. So the best thing to do is to have a different environment for any web app that you may have. There's a couple different options on how to handle and use environments. Since I'm using Conda, I'm going to open my Anaconda prompt. And if you're using Conda, feel free to copy the same commands that I'm using here. So the first command that we're going to need is this one. That's pretty much going to create a new environment using Python 3.9 version and the environment is going to be called Flask. And if I click enter, uh, it's just going to create it. Once it's done, you're going to, you can activate it using Conda, activate Flask. All right, Conda will display the environment name here so we know that we're working on Flask. Now, next thing we want to do is install Flask. We're going to say Conda install minus C, Conda Flask. Give it an enter. It's going to ask us if we want to install. Obviously, yes. And then just wait for it. With just a couple commands, now we have an environment that's kind of isolated so we can just play with our app and install whatever we need without worrying about messing stuff with for other apps. So that's pretty cool. And we can get back to the app and start writing some code. First, we want to import Flask. Then we need to define our app. And that's going to be set by app flask.name. This is just a standard code that is required for every Flask application. Now we're going to define one function, and this is the function that's going to be called whenever our user launches our website. So let's just call it hello for you know, hello world. The way that we can link this function to what Flask does, that is going to just pretty much call something whenever this website is open, we need to set up a decorator. For that, we're going to say at app.route. And inside the parentheses, our only parameter is going to be the, the path to whatever URL we're using. So let's just call it uh, slash, which is going to be pretty much our home page. This decorator turned our function into a view flash function. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But in very simple words, what it means is that it's going to run a function that you defined for whatever route you set up. And this is going to get clearer as we advance in this tutorial, but for the moment, just trust me. <laughs> By definition, all the view functions for Flask must return an HTML. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because that's the HTML that it's going to get rendered whenever you go into this route. So let's just add some hello world here. And there we go. Now we're returning just like an H1 hello mission código, which is just printing this text into the HTML. We have all the code that we need. Now we can test it. And for that, let's open our Anaconda prompt and just get back to it. And you have to navigate to the folder where your script is. What we're trying to accomplish here is to get up and running a local server that's going to allow us to render all this locally and we can test our web app. Now, but before we do that, we have to set two environment variables. The first one is called Flask app, as you can see here. And you just want to give it the name of the Python file that you developed. And we're just going to say app because that's the way we called our, <laughs> our web app. For, for Windows, we do this with the keyword set, but if you're using Unix, remember to use export. And the second variable that we want to set is just the environment that we're going to use Flask with. By default, this is production, but since we're just developing this, we want to set it to development so we can get some stack trace errors and some pretty cool stuff. Now, as the name implies, this is for development, so you don't want to use that for production websites, but we're going to take care of that later in another tutorial. Now we can just launch our server saying flask run. 
and it should give you an output something like this. So the first thing here is serving Flask app, then our environment, which we set to be development. And the other important thing here is this. It's running on this HTTP. It's running on this, it's running on this address, which is local HTTP, blah, 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 blah. And it's running on port 5000. This is the default port. So every time you launch Flask run, it's gonna try to do it on this one. So if you try to launch two different web apps at the same time, it's gonna crash. In that case, you can use the minus P flag and just set whatever port you want. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna copy it. And I'm just gonna paste it here. And here we go. Hello, Mission Código. And this is exactly what we had on our code. So we have a working simple app. But it's pretty awesome with just five lines of code, a couple of environment variables, and then just launching, you can have a web app just running. It seems to be working, but now we want to handle a couple different paths. What happens if we want to go into something like, you know, our about page? It's not gonna work. It's like URL not found. Obviously we didn't code anything, but we can do it pretty simple. Let's just copy this part. We're gonna change the route to say about, change the function name, about. And then we're just gonna change the text here to, this is our about page. I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna try this link again. Okay, I forgot to add the, the slash here, for slash. But I added, save it, and now we can try this again. Boom, this is our about page. By now I think it's pretty clear how the view functions in Flask work. You define a new function that's gonna return an HTML, and then you decorate it using the app.route decorator, and you give us parameter, the route that you actually want to handle. And you can do this with as, as many as you, as you want, but I want to show you a couple more things that you can do in order to handle different things. Up until now, this web app is actually really not that much of an app. It's more of a, just a website. The way a web app usually works is that you get some input from the user and you handle that input in order to provide some function or some solution or something to the user back. So let's do just that. And we're gonna do a function that's gonna allow our users to capitalize some string. So we're just gonna call it cap and then give it, we're gonna use like one string, so it's gonna be an S. And we want to return an HTML, so I'm just gonna copy this so I don't have to rewrite everything. And I'm gonna get rid of this part. And inside of this, we want to return the word the user just gave us. F and I'm gonna say S. So let's try that out. For that, I almost forgot. We have to decorate it. So I'm gonna say app.route and then I'm gonna give it a different path, which is gonna say cap at the slash. Pretty cool, save. Now, this is where it gets a little bit different, but it's actually not really hard. So we're gonna add after that whatever input parameter we're expecting, which in this case is the variable S. So we just put it inside of this ones, say S and add a forward slash, and then we're done. Let's save it and try it out. So if we say cap, and then we say what word we want to get capitalized. So I'm gonna say just like Python, enter, and it didn't work. Why? Oh, damn it, this F is supposed to go outside. <laughs> All right, there we go. And I was just writing the same word that I put here. So if I started something else like test, just write it there. So we want to add the functionality in our Python function. This is very simple. We just want to capitalize it. So capitalize and then we'll save it and retry it. And now it's working. You got to be careful when you do this kind of stuff because the user can insert some like JavaScript and do some cross site scripting. But Flask has a very simple way to handle this kind of stuff. We're going to import an escape function from markup safe, and then we're going to use it on our code. Escape. There we go. So if I refresh this, we're not gonna see any changes, but if this was some JavaScript in here in, in the text, then you would be safe because what Flask does is that it will just transform it to text and it will just be displayed as text instead of executing the JavaScript. So that way your app is gonna be safer. We added this route that allows us to handle some text, but we can, even, but we can do the same thing for input of a different kind and even for more than one. So let's do another example with something similar. And I'm just gonna copy this one. But now let's change it so that we just do an addition of two numbers that the user gives us. So we're gonna change the name of our function. I'm gonna call it add. It's gonna say A and B are gonna be our parameters. I'm gonna get rid of this. So I'm just gonna write some string here. In our previous function, 
for capitalize, we were expecting a string. That's the default variable for the route decorator. So if now we're expecting an integer, we have to specify that. And we're gonna do it inside here. Just go integer, colon, and then the name of the variable that you're expecting, which is A. And pretty conveniently, we can do exactly the same for as many parameters as we want. I'm just gonna call it B. Those are the two parameters that we need in our function for adding. Oh, it seems like I have another, a couple of extra bracket here. So let me just get rid of that. There we go. Save it. Now I can test it. Say add. I'm gonna add one plus six. Adding one and six is seven. It's pretty cool what you can do with just a couple of lines and using the Flask framework. It's very powerful, even though it's very lightweight. And yeah, true, most of the time we don't interact with websites or web apps through the URLs, but it, this is just a way to introduce the handling of these different parameters using Flask. In another tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to use like text boxes, drop down menus, and all that kind of neat stuff. For the time being, the last thing that I wanna show you is how to handle different errors. So the function that we're gonna use is kind of a login. So let's say login, user, and we're gonna say, we're gonna need a user. Here we have our list of valid users. Usually you will get this from a database and that's and again for another tutorial. So later I'm gonna show you how to link your web app to a database. But for the moment, let's just use this. And now we just want to return a welcome message. And this is actually gonna be user ID. So we can go in there, user ID. And we add the decorator. Pretty much what it's gonna happen is we're gonna say use uh, login and then give it an index, right? So we're gonna say one, it's my ID, and saying, welcome, Raphael, this is my first index. And I hope you can see now that if th there's a big mistake here. Like what happens if I give an index out of range? I'm gonna get an error. And this is gonna allow me to show you something because we're running on development environment. We can actually see the stack trace and find where the error is already know that this is a list index out of range here in our welcome user ID. In order to get rid of this error and have a better app, we want to have a, a try clause where we say, if, if let's try it. And if it's not valid, we'll do something. Now for this, we want to handle the index error, which is the error that we had before here. And usually what happens when you have an error, you want to display a 404 page. And for this flask has a, an abort, function that we can just import from there and then call it using abort, uh, abort, and then give it the, the number that you want to give it back. So in this case, 404, so, which is the usual page not found error. Let's save this and retry this. And now we get a not found URL, which is pretty standard and just the way you want to handle it in your web apps. That was pretty cool, right? This is a very cool and quick introduction and very simple to what Flask can do for you. With less than 30 lines, we were able to build an app that can handle, you know, like four or five different routes with different input parameters from our users and even handle different errors. You learn how to make your app safe using the escape function to avoid cross-site scripting. And you also learn how to handle errors and just display an error page using the abort function. I hope you enjoyed this video and this quick tutorial and just learning how to build a web app using Flask. There's a lot more to learn to Flask as you can imagine. And for that reason, I'm gonna build a full tutorial on Flask from beginning, which is this video, all the way to deploying your app using different services. So if you wanna learn more, take a look at the second video where we're gonna take a look at how to use templates in order to make our website look a little better. I hope you liked it. Smash the like button if you did, and I'll see you in the next one.